Hello everyone and welcome back to Europa Universalis 4. I'm Lord Form and here's an updated Castile guide for the Empire update. Some people have been really asking for this and I'm more than willing to do it. This Castile is one of the more fun nations to play in the game to the point that Castile, the Ottomans and France or and England were probably the winners in this time period. Um, Steal a little less than others because they declined towards the end of the Europa time period. But uh, they had a really good run of things. They had a whole golden century where Castile and Spain, then Spain, were some of the richest and most powerful nations in the world. So Castile is a very fun nation. They're definitely um, a bit more towards the colonizing than European conquest. But you can take them either direction. Their mission tree is strong. Um for both conquest and colonies. A little bit heavier on the conquering the new world, considering Spain owned about half of the Americas at one point. Uh, it's not very unusual. So let's quick run down their ideas and then we'll go into their starting situation. They start with 15 morale of armies and they have a Marines force limit of five, which is a special unit that allows quicker um, naval invasions and uh, lack of a landing penalty if i remember correctly so they are that's a pretty nice little bonus uh portugal and england I, and the dutch i think are the other ones that get it um castile though gets it early on so do they get reconquista yearly army tradition k1 missionary sprink spanish inquisition in my opinion the second best description monty python references for the win Plus two missionary strength, really good early on to convert the Muslims of North Africa. Then you get production efficiency, 10%. Not bad. You get one free colonist and you get a fabrication on the colonial region, which kind of like basically replacing the, um, the ending bonus to exploration ideas. But you get it earlier. Uh, plus one diplomatic reputation, plus chance of new air, plus 33%. Then you get plus 10 insp institution spread, negative 0.5 autonomy, and you get global settler increase 25%. Now, be aware though, when you form Spain, which should be your goal, you will get new um, ideas. And I'll quickly go over those. So Spain's ideas are very similar to Castile's. They start out with 15% morale of armies, plus one artillery fire, which is really nice, plus two popul influence per year which is really strong and incentivizes you to actually stay catholic you're probably one of the better catholic nations in the game uh plus one colonist same as the castilian mission treasure fleet plus 25 percent naval force mod li force limit modifier uh basically you get you can build a overwhelming fleet you can obviously make it military or you can make it trade fleet both are really good our Spanish Armada, plus 10% heavy ship combat, plus one naval leader maneuver. This allows you to basically fight England on an even footing. You can probably build a larger and almost equivalent in strength fleet to beat them, which is really good. Then you've got plus 15% global tariffs and negative 33% envoy travel time, which is basically telling you get colonial nations, leave one of your diplomats constantly improving relations with colonial nations, and they'll move between them faster, which is nice because you're a globe-spanning empire, so 33% uh, diplomat travel time is really nice. You also get one, plus one diplomatic possible policies. Honestly, I think it's the weakest thing in the idea tree. You really shouldn't exceed your diplomatic possible policies anyway as uh, Castile or Spain. And then you get plus one yearly prestige and your finishing ambition is plus five discipline. Basically, it's similar to the Castilian tree, but in the end, it's stronger. It's a bit more of a uh, empire one. You'll notice that some of the strongest Castilian ideas are front loaded, like in their first two, three and their traditions, because you're probably never going to get to these ones. You should form Spain, honestly, before you even get to this idea. Uh, I should mention how you form Spain. You can either conquer Aragon basically you have to kill off Granada and some of Aragon and then you can form it militarily or the normal way that happened you can do the Iberian Union form it diplomatically once you hit admin tech 10 you just click the button and you inherit Aragon which saves you a ton of diplomatic power due to you know integrating them and a lot of admin power if you were to go to conquer them well in order to get the Iberian Union, since I should mention that, since most of you will probably come here, you basically have to have a heir or a ruler of a different 
gender than the Aragonese do, or there has to be a regency, um, which is actually not that hard because the first thing you should do is Castile is take this heir. He's one of he is the worst heir in the game, bar none. Um, negative twenty five percent chance of new heir, which is terrible, but he's a zero 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 ruler. So the first thing you should do probably as Castile is immediately disinherit this guy. You have a 1-1-2 one, one, king, which is not very good, and you're going to have issues with that. But getting rid of that guy, the last thing you want is Enrique on the throne, and it'll set you back like 80 years of gameplay. Hopefully you even get a, a, a 5 or 6 heir. Um, it does cause you to inevitably get the Castilian Civil War. Um, but you're going to get that anyway. This is one of the hardest disasters in the game to avoid, in my opinion. And it's why, despite Castile being a really strong nation early on, they probably have one of the worst early games of any of the great European powers. Just due to this event and the fact that all their expansions in, is, are into Muslim lands uh, doesn't help either. Um, this disaster, kind of painful. Um but if you've got a strong army, like you actually have an army, you're not in a war or losing a war, you can handle it without too much trouble. Um, you're going to probably get that around 1460, give or take a couple of years. Um, once you do it, you get stability and stuff, and then you have to never have to deal with it again, which is really nice. So, starting moves. First thing you should do as Castile, barring virtually nothing, um, is to ally Portugal. The only exception I would make is if Aragon isn't your rival, allying them first is a good move. But they almost always are your rival. It's like, there's very few rules in the game that seem to occur consistently, one of which is that Castile and Aragon don't get along. But I have seen it otherwise, so I figured I'd make mention of that case. So, big reason for Portugal is you have historical friends, you've got a chance of getting a uh, union over them, and they probably will help intervene in your civil war and supply some very much needed troops. If you've got enough trust and you give them military access, they may even march in and kill off your rebels, which is really nice. Uh, plus, it's a good idea to be friends with these guys. Your alliance with Portugal can last most of the whole game, um, unless, of course, you actually want to conquer them, which you may actually want to do because you get a mission for that but i'll talk about that a little bit more later so you ally portugal now this is where it kind of is the way the next step is kind of rng dependent i tend to not go after granada first first off you have a truce with them till uh for four years which means you can't attack them early on i tend to find one of the best strategies is to invade Tlemcen. Now, I mentioned this in my other guide video, but I'll mention it again here. Tlemcen is very s relatively small and relatively weak. They are a 105% war score, so you can't just outright invade them. But the most common occurrence is Morocco and Tunis ally each other, which they're not going to in this case because they're rivals, um, and then tend to invade Tlemcen. If they invade Tlemcen, you want to have a claim on usually uh, Waran here. Um, that's usually the safest one. They tend to take this province or this province. You want to invade them. You're much stronger than them. Um, you can take on most of the North African natives without much trouble. Uh, you want to invade them and you want to make them a vassal. Now, why do you want to make them a vassal? Because the next thing you should do is make them a march. Probably. Personal preference, I find making them a march easier because then you can feed them all of the Muslim land of North Africa, which you don't actually really want for some time. You don't want it early on because you can't convert it until you get to the Spanish Inquisition. I shouldn't say you can't because you can do this plus two missionary strength from this and you can do a state uh, stuff. Why am I not able to click on the states? You can do edicts to convert things. And then it can work out that way. And you can convert, but it's slow and expensive. It's much easier to give it to an already existing Muslim nation. If you make them a march and you give them all this land, they'll probably be bringing 20 to 30 troops to your European wars. And prevent anyone else from conquering the area, which is nice. So Tlemcen, 
vassalization is one of the strategies I use. Um, you should probably start moving your stuff down there immediately. You actually start with a non-full army force limit, and you can actually support a full army. So you should definitely, one of your first moves, build up your army. You're going to want a full army for all your African wars. The other thing is you have, and you're one of the best nations in Europe because of it, you have one of the, like, five gold mines in Europe. And you have the arguably safest one um, after Austria's Tyrol one. So I recommend La Mancha here. You start developing it. You put basically a whole tech level almost worth of Diplo points into it. Get it up to around 10 or so. Because um, already just on three, it's giving you two gold. You triple that. You're getting six gold a month from that. True, you're going to be having inflation, but it will finance your wars. And more importantly, it will allow you to have advisors early on, which Castile and then Spain has money issues until you get colonial nations going. Because especially with the changes to how trade works in Europe, where everything goes to Genoa, it used to go to Sevilla. Um, you really need to control this trade node heavily in order to prevent you losing all your trade through Valencia. Um a little bit harder to be overwhelmingly rich as Castile, but once you get two to three colonial nations coming and you start getting gold, you should be rolling in the income. Um, before I continue, though, I should mention that in order to use some of the Castilian mechanics, you do need the Golden Century DLC. So if you don't have that and you want to play as Portugal or Castile and really enjoy it, and Granada if you want their enhanced mechanics, you need that DLC. For Castile, that has several changes, one of which is you have the Council of the Indies, which gives you plus 20 global tariffs and plus 20% trade fleet income. It is definitely superior to these bureaucracy reforms. You should take it when you get it. It's really good. 20% more gold from treasure fleets is amazing. 20% from tariffs means you'll be making tons of money from your colonial nations. It's what will finance a lot of the year your conquests in Europe if you're going for that. Uh, the other thing you should pay attention to is your flagship. Now, let me just quick uh, pass out some stuff to the estates here so we can actually look at that. Because Castile gets unique trade ship, uh, flagship mechanics, which is really quite cool. Um, and they're ones that you're definitely going to want to use. There we go. Flagships. So, Castile has the Spanish ones, and one of which is the Spanish Grand Armada, reduce fleet attrition. It's okay if you want to explore the world. Hunt pirates efficiency 100%. That is really good because North Africans tend to privateer and raid your coast, and that means you can put less ships on it and pretty much make them less useful. If you want to have fun, you can also add their mass load cannons on there and just have it an overwhelmingly strong flagship. I don't really recommend the fleet attrition that much, uh, I'd honestly much rather go for the trade route map, increase trade power per ship in fleet, and basically just use your fleet to control the Sevilla trade node. Honestly, you can almost make a light ship and do it that way. Uh, that's a pretty good one. And if you want to do marine stuff, although you have marines already, uh, this would make your movement on and off ships easier. But I don't find it as useful, so I tend to do trade power per ship in fleet. Uh, hunt pirates and load cannons if you want a really strong flagship, but it's up to you. But the key is the hunt pirates efficiency means you can put like five heavy ships protecting trade in Seville, Sevilla, and uh, you basically don't have to deal with pirates raiding your coast anymore. It's quite nice. And only they can get it. Uh, Portugal has better ones, but uh, steels aren't bad. So after that, what else do you, who do you else do you want to ally? France. Uh, in this case, France is my rival, but ideally you want a royal marriage to them because there's a pretty good chance the French dynasty dies out and one of your dynasty gets on their throne. If you can't ally France, the other option is you ally Austria, which you can't do initially. But uh, once you rival France and stuff, Austria's opinion should improve to the point you can ally them. Although in this case, they didn't rival France, which is unusual. Um, basically restart in that case because you do want either an, a French or an Austrian alliance. You ally Austria and you royal marriage them, and you're both rivals to France. You'll get an event where their dynasty gets on your throne. So you'll have the Habsburg dynasty. 
Why would you want to do that? Well, now you can enforce a personal union over Austria if they have a weak heir or no heir, which is really too good of an opportunity to pass up if you can pull it off. It's going to be a hard war, but if you've got Arian, you've got Naples, and you've got a lot of Italy, you can definitely do it. So, once you've invaded Tlemcen, you've got to prep for the war against Granada, which takes time. Um, you have a mission for that, prepare Reconquesta. You have to have manpower of 60, which is a little tough to get with the reduced manpower. It might be worth going da down here and doing increased levies for 50% national manpower modifier basically with the emperor update they assume that you're going to take this all the time early on and uh if you don't you've got issues you're going to want to start obviously building up crown land so you can start giving out monthly uh, admin diplo and military power in the case of castile i'd almost recommend doing diplo and then admin and then swapping the military mainly because you're going to want to go exploration and expansion if you want to colonize and the extra diplo power is really handy to get through this tree much faster so um that's what you should do with the estates uh, let's see what else okay missions so once you do that you get a claim on this region unless granada immediately allies like the ottomans morocco Tlemcen, and tunis you should probably invade them uh, sometimes you can call Portugal in, you don't really need to, um, and you can take over Granada. Uh, it helps if you've got Tlemcen over here as a march, because then you can station your troops here and invade these directions while leaving a small army to actually take Granada. That way you can peace out Tunis or Morocco, because Granada is going to get an ally. Basically, they always have an ally. Um, that way you can peace them out and actually take all the Granada land instead of just two or three of them. Once that's done, however, you're going to have an event, and it's a very tricky event. You can automatically convert all four of these provinces to Catholic um, at the cost of a large Muslim uprising in several years. If you want to go historical, you do that. You get Torquemada, which helps with converting North Africa. If you don't, you can't convert any Muslim land in that region or the revolt. Uh, you basically want to do the forced conversion despite the revolt because you have a mission for um, converting Iberia, and they all have to be Christian anyway. Um, so getting the free conversion is nice. Obviously, you have to deal with the revolt, but you're going to have to redeal with the revolt eventually anyway when you convert the land, so it's honestly better to do it early on. Um, the annoying part is it tends to hit when you're in the middle of the Castilian Civil War, so be aware of that can be an issue. Uh, you also have subject Navarra. So Navarra here is vassalizable from the beginning of the game. You just need to get the relations. I would recommend you do the alliance, royal marriage, improve relations, and try and get them as your vassal. Otherwise, Aragon or France will get them. And if France gets them, it's kind of a pain. If Aragon gets them, it's not a big issue because they tend to break when their king dies. Because the heir here, Joan, is actually the heir to Aragon. When this guy dies, Joan takes the throne, and he actually, as Aragon, will union Navarra. So then if you get the Iberian Union, you'll get them as union as well. But then you have to wait to integrate them or inheritance. Much easier to try and get them as a vassal early on. So while you're prepping for your war with Tlemcen, ally them, guarantee royal marriage, give them a gift, offer military access, stuff like that. Uh, transfer trade power if need be, get them up to 90, vassalize them, then you don't have to think about that issue. Once you do vassalize them, though, um, where is it? Oh, you can't, add, it doesn't actually show up. There's um, a strong duchies event you can get when you have subjects, and you want to take that because it gets you more diplomatic power um, because you're going to be going over your diplomatic relations as Castillo relatively quickly with unions and alliances and so additional plus two diplomatic relations will save you diplo power in the long run because if you ally portugal you vassalize Tlemcen, you vassalize navarre and you get a union over aragon that's all your alliance slots you can't even like ally the pope or france or austria so at some point you definitely want to get the strong duchies if you get both navarre and Tlemcen as vassals you can definitely get it so you should definitely work towards that. Uh, if you do get that, you get 
a castle in them and you get defensiveness. The free castle is actually kind of nice because it's a mountain and it blocks uh, progress through here. Otherwise, you have to rely on a hill fort here. If you get the uh, mountain fort here, you can delete this fort, which saves you a gold that's in your subject. Um, then you got, you know, reclaim this, you complete that, you get the fate of the kingdom of Granada, which is the conversion event. And then you convert Iberia, you get claims on Malta, ironically, and North Morocco, which basically North Morocco is these five provinces. Problem is Portugal owns one of them. Uh, but you can take over the other ones, although Portugal will probably try and conquer Tangiers and call you into that, which is a little tricky. However, if you get the Iberian Union early on, which is nice, because this counts as owned by Castile or as non-tributary subjects, a union does count for that, you will get a restoration of union on Portugal. So you could invade Portugal, union them, and then you will control all of Iberia. However, this is very, 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 very important, and there's a lot of varies there for a good reason. If you Union Portugal, they will keep colonizing if, and only if, they already have the colonial ideas. So ideally, you want to vassalize well, Union Portugal once they get Admin Tech 7, because Portugal, 90% of the time, will go exploration followed by expansion. If you wait until then, which means don't click this button even if you can, because you're CB only lasts a handful of years. Um, once you get the union over Aragon, you can break your alliance with Portugal and royal marriage and basically offend them. And then wait till that treaty, uh, truce expires and then do the CB once they have both idea trees. Once they have them, they won't switch and they'll progress down them and they'll colonize. And then when you integrate them, all their colonies will become yours, including their colonial nations, which is... It's basically two free colonists that you didn't have to pay for that are colonized in the world for you. Um, pretty semi-advanced strategy, but I recommend you do it because it will increase the amount of land you have. And besides, who doesn't want to own Portugal, especially as Spain? Doesn't it? It would look much better if it was all Spain rather than Spain and Portugal. The same. Uh, once you do this mission, though, you get uh, events in uh, Italy to invade. Um, if you're lucky, Aragon's king either dies or he doesn't, the, the last will and testament event doesn't fire or Naples stays as a union under Aragon. The AI tends to break the union over Naples, which then tends to mean you have to invade and conquer Naples. Thank goodness you get permanent claims on them, so you can't. Uh, obviously this is going to take a, like a hundred years or more to conquer all this just because the amount of aggressive expansion you pick up expanding in Europe. Uh, but you can do it, and once you do it, you get permanent claims on, like, all of Italy up here. It's a little ridiculous. You conquer Milan, uh, you get diplomatic reputation. Now, I should point out a little tip I figured out. Once you get the claims on this whole region, you can usually just threaten Florence for Pisa. They tend to not value this province as much as they should. Or you can threaten Genoa for one of theirs. And then you've got a staging area. So you don't just have to invade them. You can actually threaten them, land your troops, and then invade their neighbors and then come back to them. Uh, it's a much easier way of invading Italy. So try it out if you want to do that. Uh, you've got this plus ultra. Basically, you have to have an explorer and you have to own, I think it's this province right here, which you may not get and which is annoying because a lot of the times... Portugal will colonize that province first. And the odds of you beating Portugal to the first colonist are pretty slim, considering they have a better king and they go for it pretty intensely. Um, but if you do get it and you have a colonist, you get plus 20 colonial range, which will help you get to the New World. Not really an issue, though, once you hit Diplotax 7 and you get or. I think it's or actually in the case of Castile. I think you can reach the New World just by getting to the third exploration. Uh, but if you do two and then you get to Tech 7, you'll definitely be able to reach the Caribbean or Africa, in which case you'll get plus ultra, get the range, and it wants you to discover the Caribbean. You do that, you get Trade Center of Sevilla. Sevilla gets like permanent trade bonus, which is really nice. Uh, and you get Global Settler Increase, basically incentivizing you to colonize even more. 
and you do Colonial Caribbean, you get more settler chance. This one you have to have um, fully colonized province, which is Castile is not an issue. And then it really wants you to go after um, uh, basically Haiti, Dominica, and then Cuba, which historically you owned. The problem is Portugal goes for them. However, if you Union Portugal, you can complete these missions as well, which is really nice. Uh, the Casa Contraction, um, I believe, if I remember correctly, it gives you settlers, um, a settler increase per year, which is really nice. And then it wants you to invade um, basically the Inca, the Aztecs, and the Maya, which you did historically. You also have the Spanish Main, basically created colonial nation in Colombia, which is, for those of you who don't know, basically northern South America, not the Caribbean, where Colombia is today, is the Spanish main. Now you do that, you get in, I think, honestly, this is the most permanent claims anybody gets. You basically get claims on South America. <laughs> it's a little ridiculous, the sheer amount of permanent claims you get on the areas. Um, and you get Pizarro as a conquistador, which is nice. And this allows you to invade the Inca, which you want to do because you get gold by invading them you can get a thousand eight hundred gold uh, and then you can do great new spain basically mexico you get claims on florida colonize california fortify florida stuff like this uh and then if you convert a lot of the area it says holy order i'll get into that you can get some popple influence and then it wants you to do west africa and keep going down this i believe castile has a couple more missions involving uh in conquests in europe but obviously you can't see them as Castile, and I don't really feel the need to go swap to uh, Spain. You'll figure it out when you play Spain and have fun. Uh, basically, it wants you to invade and control France, the Lowlands, Austria, etc., and become Emperor of the HRE, which there's an achievement to do as Castile, Spain, and it's a matter of luck because I still haven't managed to pull it off. So, Holy Orders. Holy Orders might be the coolest thing in some ways introduced in Golden Century. Basically, for paying 50 of your different monarch point, monarch powers, you can get plus one tax and a construction cost missionary strength in all the provinces in the state. So this province right here is five provinces. For 50, you can get five admin development and cheaper construction is really strong or you can do plus one production i will point out it does replace slaves because dominicans don't support slavery which is kind of a cool little thing as you convert culture if you're gonna you can do it in your colonial nations if you want to have all nice spanish in them but you should be sending a lot of your um uh, nations in North Africa, your provinces, send all the people there to your colonies anyway for the bonuses. And then if you want to do manpower, you get plus one manpower, unrest, devastation. This one here on the Franciscans can actually be quite good on these southern provinces, which tend to get raided by the Africans a lot because the devastation, they, when you get raided, the devastation goes up and that will control it a lot better than having to build forts in the area. Um, I will point out though, if you're going to do it, make sure you honestly, in some ways, you may want to do the Diplo here, just so you get the plus one development in the gold mine, but then you don't get the control there. Basically, you should apply it to every single state that you own. It's really useful. You have to own the full state, which is a little hindrance, but Spain owns a lot. You can get like 30 or 40 development just by doing that in your capital region. It's quite cool. Um, it allows you to jump up considerably into the ranks your sixth great power that could probably push you up to third or fourth once you get Aragon you should be first or second if you get Portugal with their colonial nations you'll get a ton too uh, in the long term though uh, you should aim to dominate the new world in terms of colonial nations you have a mission that it basically says invade England and union them because the Spanish mission tree is really strong with unions and stuff. So make sure to check that out once you get a chance to form Spain. Um, you basically want to own the New World and steer as much trade as possible to you. It's a little tricky. Basically, any trade you can steer to the Caribbean, you can get to Sevilla. But like 13 colonies in Canada, you can't actually get to your lands, which is really a pain. And in the long run, it's almost worth 
conquering the English Channel or Genoa just to steer trade to them and get more money. But the Sevilla Trade Node, makes if you develop the center of trade and you get all the events, if you're really lucky, you get... Um, you get colonialism in Sevilla, where you've already gotten the bonus, and Sevilla can have like 150 trade power. It, it can get pretty insane. I've seen heavily developed Sevilla dominating the trade node on its own. Um, be aware that Tangiers counts, which really incentivizes you to take it or kill Portugal to get those three more and control the entire trade node. Uh, outside of that... Um, you have the potential to conquer a lot in West Africa. Um, put it in trade companies if you do in some ways. It's not really worth owning yourself. I tend to convert provinces before I put them in trade companies just to make it look better. Um, and you kind of want to dance your way around to uh, Indonesia. I think you've got a mission to get the Philippines as Spain, in which case you want to steer as much trade as possible back around Africa, which means you need South Africa. Uh, you probably want to conquer Madagascar. There's a lot of gold mines down in the Mutapa region, which is really good for Spain. Uh, basically, once you get your colonial nation set up, as long as they have one gold mine in a colonial nation, they will slowly build up a treasure fleet of gold and then ship it to you. Uh, you just got to be aware if there's privateers in the Caribbean or in your trade node, they will loot it. But the plus 20% of gold really helps with that. Um, I think that's basically it as Castile. They're a pretty good nation. Uh, I already mentioned that you really want to do exploration followed by expansion, probably followed by offensive um, or quality. You've got 15% morale here. You don't get a huge 20% like France does, and you're not going to be invaded by that many people. So an offensive army is honestly be better than defensive for Castile. Uh, in the long run, you probably want to slowly make your way along North Africa and hit Egypt, which will bring you in conflict with the Ottomans. But the reason I mention that is because you can pretty much freely attack the Muslims here without Europe caring, which means you can kind of sneak your way into Italy and then go out and invade Egypt without uh, coalitions. It's very easy to get coalitions as Castile, Spain, because you, a lot of your missions are take developed lands and stuff on this Spanish mission tree. And you take like three provinces and you get a death coalition, which actually makes diplomatic and if you're really worried about coalitions, espionage for the reduced aggressive expansion impact really useful. Um, I should point out the fact that if you're Popple Controller, you get negative 20 aggressive expansion. And as Spain, you get plus two yearly Popple influence for being Catholic. You can basically be Curia Controller 60 or more percent of the time as Castile, and you should make an effort to do so if you face Catholic. Um, it will greatly help with your conquests. If you're really lucky, you can become Emperor. Um, you can sometimes get land up here due to the Fate of Burgundy event, which will put you much closer to the Electors, giving you a much better chance. Uh, in terms of electors you're likely to get, you're better off getting Trier, Mainz, and Cologne than trying to get someone like Brandenburg, Bohemia, or Saxony, unless you get a union. Castile can enforce some insane amount of unions, Steel, Spain. And other than that, I don't believe they have any unique decisions or stuff, and they don't have a ton of unique events going into the late game because Spain started to decline in the 1700s. Basically, the Spanish Armada versus the English was the beginning of the Spanish decline. Um, when you get all the gold, though, in Castile, I wouldn't recommend using it for your wars too much. I'd recommend building manufacturers and trade centers. It's going to help you more than conquering land because Castile is, doesn't have the best land to develop. It's got some good land, but it's got a lot of mountains and drylands and hills. So getting the production and trade is going to get you more than trying to rely on tax bases. Plus, you need to grow. Um, I said you want to have trouble with colonial nations. If you don't improve relations, you leave them alone. Mexico, New Spain will tend to get rebellious pretty quickly because they will end up with a massive amount of development if you feed it. But as Castile, you can pretty much ignore Europe if you don't want to play a conquest game and just colonize and still be one of the greatest powers in the world. Uh, there's a couple achievements for them. The big one is complete the entire mission tree of Spain, which 
it's more than this so have fun with that it's it's quite quite the achievement oh actually here's the west the east indies philippines you can automatically convert the philippines to catholic which is really nice this deal is a fun nation spain is even more fun the problem is they just have a really rough start um i will point something out um you start focused on military power. I would stay focused on military power. Your morale combined with Miltech 4 or even Miltech 5 and uh, this ready for war for another 5 morale, you can have an insane amount of morale and that's part of the reason you can take on so many North Africans so early on. Um, it's just you stack the bonuses and you become really strong. Uh, you want to invade this area, but be careful you don't take too much of it and try and own it yourself because the constant rebellions and land you can't convert will just cripple you. Um, that's basically it. You don't have a lot of threats as Castile. You'd have even less if you were Portugal, but you're a military powerhouse, honestly, without trying. Castile is honestly easy game mode some ways even on iron man so that will be it for me hope you guys enjoyed this and you like the guide if you do please like it please leave comments please check out my other guides and please subscribe thanks for watching bye for now